Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to show you a technique for formatting text quickly and efficiently and in such a way that you can easily change it when the client throws you a curveball. So I think you're going to enjoy this one. So here I've typed out a block of text that we want to format in interesting ways. And the method that we're going to use is the sequence text behavior. So let's come over text animation, drop on a sequence text and let's add a parameter that we can work with. So face and color and let's choose our color. So I'm sure you're familiar with the basic setup of this. What happens is that we transition from this new color back to the original color of the text, or of course the other way around, depending on the sequencing that we've chosen. But we don't actually want to be looking in terms of animation here. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna to come to the speed and we're going to choose custom. Now, by default, the custom speed gives us the same results pretty much as the constant in as much as it adds a keyframe to the start and end. So it animates between zero and 100%. But we don't actually want any animation for the purposes of this. And you'd have thought that what we could do is to just reset the parameter to remove the animation. So no animation. It's all well and good until you close the project and open it up again. And when you open it up again, you'll find that the animation has been restored and there's nothing you can do about it. So let's undo that and do it a different way. So let's come to the last keyframe there and let's just delete that last keyframe like so. Go back to the beginning. So now we've got that keyframe at the start that's locking us in place and that will, I think, stay. So this bug I mentioned to Apple years and years ago, I thought they'd fixed it and then it's unfixed now. So that's the way around it. You've got to keep that keyframe. Anyway, enough of a digression on that. So you'll notice that we've got a select menu and by default, the range is all. But supposing we choose line, You'll notice that now just the top line is highlighted. So why is the top line highlighted? Well, you'll also notice that we've got a start and end index and the start index is set to zero and the end index is set to one. Now, if you're familiar with indices, the first item in the index is always zero rather than one. So you actually have to be sort of adding one in your head to get the numbers that you want. So for example, if we set the end index to three and the start index to two, we'd pick up the third line because line three has got an index of two. So that means that we can highlight any line that we want, which is very handy. We can also invert the result. So now everything apart from our selection is reformatted and we can also reverse it. Now, just think how this works. We're actually counting backwards from the end of our text block. So zero, one, two. So the start index is two. And that's why we've got this line highlighted, this line here, which is the third up from the bottom. So I'm going to undo that reverse and let's look at some of the other options. So we can do character, which means that whichever characters are included within this index range will be highlighted. We can do character in Word, which is really quite interesting because the index now works based on each individual word. So let's go for one and two. And so you can see that we've got the second character of every word is highlighted. And again, if we reverse that, it's the second to last character of every word. So really quite a powerful little option there. So that's character in Word. Character in line is more obvious. So here we're getting the second character of every line or the second, third and fourth character of every line in that case, because I've just selected one to five, or we could go from zero to five or whatever. That's pretty obvious. Word is what it says it is, just we're highlighting each individual word. So four to five, we've managed to pick out the word fascinating. Word in line is great. So let's go for zero and one for this. So now we've highlighted the first word of every line. If we reverse it, we've highlighted the last word of every line. Very, very useful. And do you see how easy it is? We can just retype this text as well. So supposing the client says, well, I don't want this, this word efficiently here. Remove efficiently. And actually I want curveballs to be on the same line as whatever. You can see that the formatting remains no matter how we change the text. Really useful if you're having to 
and actually change the text. So here we've only got two colours, but supposing we wanted a different colour for the third word in the line. Well, let's duplicate this sequence text. Let's pick a different colour. And then all we need to do is change the index. So we want the third word means we need to be two to three for the index. You can see now we've got the third word highlighted in this new colour. We can do it again, right click duplicate, pick another colour, and then again just change the index. So go from three to four. And now the fourth word in each line has got this new colour. So really amazingly powerful. And we're just sort of stacking these up on top of each other. And again, you know, no matter how we retype this text, all that formatting stays. So I think this is a really fantastic way of doing it. Imagine having to do that manually by picking up the letters of each word. You know, we'd have to select the letters either with the text tool or with the transform glyph tool. We'd have to come into here, appearance and color and do this for each word. And then of course the client comes in and changes the text and or wants different colors in different places. And it's all a serious pain. So we're, ha we're avoiding all of that. So let's look at a couple of other examples. So I'm going to delete all except the first of these sequence texts. So delete. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the effect of each individual word being highlighted in sequence. So let's come back over to the behavior. So the way we're going to do this is to link the end index to the start index. So let's add parameter behavior and link. Let's grab our text, use it as this object source. Come here, behaviors, sequence text, controls, select start index. And what we need to do is we need to set the start index offset to one. So let's just hide that link behavior. Let's set the range to be word. And now if we animate the start index, you can see that we can highlight each word separately one at a time. And this is different from a normal sort of sequence text behavior it, because you can actually fully control where and when that is happening. And if you actually wanted to highlight two words at a time, unlikely maybe, but you might want to do that. You could just set the offset here to two and then you'd be able to highlight two words at once. Or obviously we could do this with line. So come back to line, we could highlight two lines at once or even three lines at once, whatever, all very easily done with this method. So the final trick I want to show you is how we can use this technique to jiggle the individual characters, not as an animation, but as a static event. So I'm going to remove that link and let's come over and let's just reset this. So we don't want that color. So let's remove that face color. Let's add in instead format position. And let's set that Y position to something like 15. So then I want to make sure that I'm on the first frame where this custom speed keyframe is. And I want to set that value to 50%. And then I want to select all for the sequencing. And for the direction, I want to select random. And now you can see that we've got a random jiggling of these letters. And if we wanted to smooth that out, we could use the spread just to smooth that out like that. And again, we could probably, you know, I don't know if this is going to work, but let's just add the color back in again. Let's have uh, this or whatever. And you can see that we're sort of randomly jiggling the colors as well, which is quite nice, especially if we increase that spread. Quite fun. So lots of very interesting stuff there for you to play with. And it all depends on using that custom speed and effectively cancelling out the animation of it. So I hope you have fun working with this and thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.